the poor man was taken apart, but with great presence of mind and much to grandfather's announce, he said, Sir, you have a dog with you. You will have to buy a ticket for it. It's not a dog, said grandfather in gently. This is a baby monkey of the specious macaques mischievous, closely related to the human specious, homeless herbalous, and there is no charge for babies. It is a big as a cat, said the ticket collector. Cat and dogs have to be paid for. But I tell you, it's only a baby, protested grandfather. Have a birth certificate to prove that, demanded the ticket collector. Next, you will be asking to see her mother, snapped grandfather. In vain did he take Tutu out of the bag. In vain did he try to prove that a young monkey did not qualify as a dog or a cat or even as a quadruped. Tutu was classified as a dog by the ticket collector and five rubies were handed over as her fare, then grandfather, just to get his own back took from his pocket the small turtles that he sometimes carried about and said, And what must I pay for this, since you charge for all creatures, great and small? The ticket collector looked closely at the turtles, prodded it with his forefinger, gave grandfather a triumphant look and said, no charge, sir, it is not a dog. Winters in North India can be very cold, a great treat for Tutu on winter evenings, while the large bowl of hot water given to her by grandfather for a bath. Tutu would commonly test the temperature with her hand, then gradually step into the bath, first one foot, then the other, as she had seen me do, until she was in the water up to her neck. Once comfortable, she would take the soup in her hands or feet and rub herself over. When the water become cold, she would get out and run as quickly as she could to the kitchen fire in order to dry herself. If anyone laughed at her during this performance, Tutu's feelings would be hurt and she would refuse to go on with the bath. One day, Tutu almost succeeded in boiling herself alive. Grandmother had left a large kettle on the fire for tea, and Tutu, all by herself and with nothing better to do, decided to remove the lid, finding the water just warm enough for a bath. She got in with her head sticking out from the open kettle. This was fine for a while until the water began to get heated. Tutu raised herself a little, but finding it cold outside, she sat down again. She continued with hopping up and down for some time until grandmother returned and held her half boiled out of the kettle. What's for tea today? asked Uncle Benji gleefully. Boiled eggs and half-boiled monkey. But Tutu was none the worse for the adventure and continued to bath more regularly than Uncle Benji. Aunt Ruby was a frequent taker of baths. This met with Tutu's approval. 
so much so that one day when Aunt Ruby had finished shampooing her hair, she looked up through a leather of bubbles and soup sauce to see Choo Choo sitting opposite her in the bath following her example. One day Aunt Ruby took us all surprise. She announced that she had become engaged. We had always thought Aunt Ruby would never marry. She had often said so herself. But it appeared that the right man had now come along in the person of the Rocky Furness, a school teacher from GOA. Rocky was a tall, firm guy good nature man a couple of years younger than aunt ruby he had a fine baritone voice and sang in the manner of the great nelson eddy as a grandmother liked baritone singer rocky was son in her good books but what on earth does he see in her Uncle Bungie wanted to know more than any girl has seen in you, snapped grandmother. Ruby's a fine girl, and they were both teachers. Maybe they can start a school of their own. Rookie visited the house quite often and brought me chocolates and cashew nuts of which he seemed to have an unlimited supply. He also taught me several marching songs. Naturally, I approved of Frocky. Aunt Ruby won my grudging admiration for having made such a wise choice. One day I overhear them talking of going to the bazaar to buy an engagement ring. I will decide I would go along to, but as Aunt Ruby had made it clear that she did not want me around, I decided that I have better follow at a discreet distance. Chocho, becoming aware that a mission of some importance was underway, decided to follow me. But as I had not invited her alone, she too decided to keep out of sight. Once in the crowded bazaar, I was able to get quite close to Aunt Ruby and Rocky without being spotted. I waited until they had settled down in a large jewelry shop before sauntering past and spotting them. I thought by accident, Aunt Ruby wasn't too pleased at seeing me, but Rocky waved and called out, come and join us, help your aunt choose a beautiful ring. The whole thing seemed to be a waste of good money, but I did not say so. Aunt Ruby was giving me one of her more unloving looks. Look, these are pretty, I said, pointing to some cheap. A bright agate set in white metal. But Aunt Ruby wasn't looking. She was immersed in a case of diamonds. Why not a ruby for Aunt Ruby, I suggested, trying to please her. That's her lucky stone, said Rocky. Diamonds are the thing for engagements. And he started singing a song about diamond, being a girl's best friend. While the jeweler and Aunt Ruby were sifting through the diamond rings, and Rocky was trying out another tongue. Chuchu has slipped into the shop Without being modest, everyone looked up to see, trying on a pretty necklace. And what are those tunes? I asked. They look like pearls, said Rocky. They are pearls, said the shopkeeper, making a graph for them. It's that dreadful monkey, cried Aunt Ruby. I knew that boy would bring him here. 
the necklace was already adorning. I thought she looked rather nice in pearls, but she gave us no time to admire the effect, springing out of our reach. Tutu dodged around Rocky, slept between my legs, and made for the crowded road. I ran after her, shouting to her to stop, but she wasn't listening. There were no branches to assess Tutu in her progress, but she used the heads and shoulders of people as springboards and so made rabbit headway through the bazaar. The jeweler left the shop and ran after us. So did several bystanders who had seen the accident and others who had no idea what it was all about joined in the chase as grandfather used to say in a crowd place so the leader even when they don't know who's leading not everyone knew that the leader was tutu only the front runners could see her she tried to make her escape speeder by leaping into back of a passing scooterist. The scooter swerved into a fruit still and came into a stone still under a sheep of banana. While the scooterist found himself in the arms of an indignant fruit seller, peeled a banana and ate a part of it. Before deciding to move on from an awning, she made an emergency landing on a washerman's donkey. The donkey promptly panicked and rushed down the road while the bundles of washing fell by the wayside. The washerman joined in the chase. Children on their way to school decided that there was something better to do than attend classes with shouts of glee. They soon overtook. The painting elders, Tutu finally left the bazaar and took a road leading in the direction of our house, but knowing that she would be caught and looked up once she got home, she decided to end the case by riding herself all the necklace definitely removing it from her neck. She flung it in a small canal that ran down the road with a carry of anguish plunged into the canal. So did Rocky, so did I, so did several other people, both adults and children. It was to be a treasure hunt. Some 20 minutes later, Rocky shouted, I have found it, convert in mood, water lilies, ferns and tadpoles. We emerged from the canal and Rocky present the necklace to relieve shopkeeper. Everyone trudged back to the bazaar to find Aunt Ruby waiting in the shop still trying to make up her mind about a suitable engagement ring. Finally, the ring was bought, the engagement was announced, and a date was set for the wedding. I don't want the monkey anywhere near us on the wedding day, declared Aunt Ruby. We will lock her up in the outhouse, promised grandfather, and we will let her out only after we have left for your honeymoon. A few days before the wedding party, I found Tutu in the kitchen, helping grandmother preparing the wedding cake. Tutu often played with the cooking and when grandmother wasn't looking, 
added herbs, spices, and other interesting items to put, so that occasionally we found a chili in the custard, or an onion in the jelly, or a strobe floating in the kitchen soup. Sometimes these additions improved the dash, sometimes they didn't. Uncle Benji lost a tooth when he bit firmly into a sandwich which contained walnut shells. I'm not sure exactly what went into the wedding cake. When grandmother wasn't looking, she insisted that Tutu was always very well behaved in the kitchen, but I did spot Tutu stirring in some red chili sauce better gore seeds and a generous holding of eggshells. It's true that some of the guests were not seen for several days after the wedding, but no one said anything against the cake. Most people thought it had an interesting flavor. The great day downed and the wedding guests made their way to the little church and stood on the outskirts of Dera, a town with a church, two mosques and several temples. I have offered to dress Tutua as a bridesmaid and bring her along, but no one expects Grandfather thought it was a good idea, so I was an obedient boy and locked Tutu in the outside the house. I did, however, leave the skylight open a little. Grandmother has always said that fresh air was good for growing children and I thought Tutu should have her share of it. The wedding ceremony went without a hitch. Aunt Ruby looked a picture and Rocky looked like a film star. Grandfather played the organ and did so with such gusto that the small choir could hardly be heard. Grandmother cried a little. I sat quietly in a corner with the little tortoise on my lap. When the service was over, we trooped out into the sunshine and made our way back to the house for the reception. The feast had been laid out on the tables in the garden. As the guard had been left in charge, everything was in order. Tutu was on her best behavior. She had, it appeared, used the skylight to avail more fresh air outside and now sat beside the three-tire wedding cake, guarding it against squirrels and the goat. She greeted the guests with a squeal of delight. It was too much for Aunt Ruby. She flew at Tutu in a rage, sensing that she was not welcome, leapt away, taking with her the tall tire of the wedding cake. Led by Major Malik, we followed her into the archer only to find that she had climbed to the top of the jackfruit tree. From there, she proceeded to pelt us with bats of wedding cake. She had also managed to get hold of a bag of confetti, and when she ran out of cake, she showered us with confetti. That's more like it, said the good hammered Rocky. No. Rich returned to the party. Uncle Benji remained with Major Malik, determined to chase Tutu away. He kept throwing stones into the tree until he received a large piece of cake. 
and goes his nose, muttering threats. He returned to the party, leaving the major to do battle. When the festivities were finally over, Uncle Bungi took the old car out of the garage and drove up the veranda steps. He was going to drive Aunt Ruby and Rocky to the Nerby Hair Resort of Missouri, where they finally would have their honeymoon, watched by family and friends. Aunt Ruby climbed into the back seat. She waved regularly to everyone. She leant out of the window and offered me her check, and I had to kiss her farewell. Everyone wished them luck. As Rocky burst into song, Uncle Benji opened the trail and stepped on the escalator. The car shoot forward in a cloud of dust. Rocky and Aunt Ruby continued to wave to us, and so did Tutu. From her perch on the rear bumper, she was clutching a bag in her hands and showering confetti on all who stood in the driveway. They don't know Tutu's with them, I exclaimed. She will go all the way to Missouri. Well, Aunt Ruby will let her stay with them. Tutu might ruin the honeymoon, said Grandfather. But don't worry, our Benji will bring her back.